Hello folks and welcome to my channel. Well this is the last in my series of old and vintage helicopters I've been demonstrating to the folks that were not around in those days so it gives a perspective of where we have come from in the RC world. Nitro engines were the only helicopters we had and what I learned on. It was pretty tough with no gyros plus you needed to know a lot like tracking, pitch curves and how to start and run an engine while I had quitting in the air. Well, many gave up. When the Skylark EH-1 hit the scene, it eliminated a lot of that. It was the first electric helicopter in the world. Well, when they became available from Cliff Rosam at Condor Hobbies, who was importing them in Costa Mesa, California, I approached him and became a distributor. I flew it for many, many folks in demos and really loved it for years. But it came with some issues that still persist today, as you're going to see. These issues were the reason I invented the electric tail rotor motor. Needed something better than this belt. And I thought, why? Well, you know, I'm going to try something. And tried it, and this is what happened. It really needed it. There were none before it, because there were no electric helicopters before it either. So first I'm going to show you a couple of the issues that went wrong, and some good flying with no issues. But first, here's some history and how we got started with it. The ETRM, as I coined, it really worked well, but there were some issues. This is the late Randy Martin, and he actually is probably the very first person to ever catch a radio-controlled helicopter. I know they weren't catching nitro ones, but uh, this one, especially with the very first electric tail rotor motor, also proved and showed that it would be able to appear wet, and it's very controllable, and that started it all. What the electric tail rotor motor has become today is just simply amazing, especially now that the gyros are here and hooked up to it. But this was the beginning. You know, no one had made electronic speed controls that would work in this model because they'd fry. Novak was making speed controllers and so was Victor Engineering. But this CH1 had two 550 brush can motors that draw a lot of power and no speed controller could handle the 12 volts that we pumped in it and flew for hours on the 12 volt car battery when we were using the 25 foot tether. Just fried them. One issue that cropped up right away and became persistent, took a lot of engineering to fix, was the draw balance between the motors. So if I gave the main motors a lot of power, the tail rotor motor would slow down. And vice versa, if I gave it a lot of tail rotor power, the main rotor slowed down. Well, this was hard to fix, but with lots of experimenting, we got it figured out. Well, Victor was a friend of mine, and he actually made a speed control for me that actually could handle the power, and that worked really good. I'm glad to get rid of that big rheostat. It could handle the power, but it was uh, jumpy, and uh, Vix, it just worked perfect. So when I told him about my ETRM idea, I asked them to make me a double speed control that could run both motors. They couldn't react with each other. They had to remain linear and balanced. This is what we came up with and it really worked great. Also the speed control for the rudder worked like any other speed controller. One way is all the way off and the other way on the stick is on. So to take off took a little finesse. I had to hold full right rudder to keep the tail rotor motor from spinning and gradually, as I increased the main rotor power to lift off, I moved the rudder stick to the center where it was trimmed for hover. Well, there were lots of hurdles, but once we got it figured out, I got it working good. I sent a videotape to Ishimasa in Japan, where we were buying them from, and a radio helicopter magazine in England. Who they published other things like my landing battery circuit. I also did a product review for them on the Kavan Shark 40. And I might dig out some video footage and see if I can show you that 47-year-old review from old videotape footage. Plus, there were no computers I could edit with back then, but the magazines were still strong. Anyway, next thing I know, it became a standard and in use everywhere. The Japanese were honorable and they paid, but the other countries that followed suit and copied it, um, I guess copying as a form of flattery and it was okay because I wasn't trying to make money it was a fluke idea that actually worked and you know I was working at craft systems at the time so 
it was all about trying to teach people to learn to fly. The more people that learn to fly, the more bought radios. I can't say that I actually didn't get compensated a little bit from the guys in Europe because Alexander sent me a free piccolo and uh, thanked me for his help in getting his idea marketed to Icarus. Well, it came in a kit and it was all metal. Everything screwed together and it took about six hours to build. A four-channel radio was required with four servos and the BEC to run the radio. There were no gyros invented then, so it was really a handful, as you're going to also see. The throttle servo ran an arm over a rheostat, so throttle was not very proportional, and it skipped the beat a lot, as you will see. But like with any helicopter, when it's running sweet, it's running sweet, and you're going to see that too. And the whole transmitter is wet. No, no. It's really slipping the tail rotor belt. And there, it broke. And this is why I invented the electric tail rotor motor, folks. Okay, here we go. This is exactly how they tell you to do it in the manual. Okay, hey, those failures are before I actually got it all cleaned up as it sat for years. Well, now it's clean, adjusted, and, and here's not a bad flight for a 47-year-old helicopter. That's right, no gyro. Take me a minute to get my brain going and get it going, but I'll get it. And it's out of trim, too. There we go. Listen to this speed controller arc and spark and jump do when I landed. It was another problem, just couldn't get it linear. And there you go, folks. The very first electric helicopter. And thank you, Ilya, for videoing. So this is the electric helicopter that started it all. And well, the ETRM solved the problem on this for me, but having enough frustration already, I said, I don't need no stinking tail rotor. And invented the Hyperfly, also for Tio Show. Well, thanks for watching this bit of history, folks. Please subscribe and like the video. And stay tuned, because I do actually have another helicopter to show you. A Cavan Shark 40. This is Dave Herbert, the Night Flyer, and we'll see you next time. Uh -huh.